Welcome to the Pharmacy Future Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. The Pharmacy Future Leaders is part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, focusing on pharmacy student perspectives, interviews, and the future outlook of our pharmacy industry. This is Maria Sibyl, P4 at Creighton University. You're listening to the Pharmacy Podcast. Welcome to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I'm your co-host, Tony Guerra, for the Pharmacy Future Leaders Podcast, broadcasting from the Des Moines Health and Public Services Building on DMAX Ankeny Campus. Connect with me on Facebook at Tony Farm D1, or you can find over 1,200 pharmacy videos supporting my audiobook, Memorizing Pharmacology, on YouTube, Tony Farm D. Uh, we're in the process of closed captioning all of them. Today, we are speaking with Maria Sibyl, a pharmacy student at Creighton University, who's looking to complete a PGY1 hospital pharmacy residency after her fourth year. She's especially interested in teaching clinical hospital pharmacy and acute care infectious disease and emergency medicine welcome to the pharmacy podcast thank you thanks for having me (laughs) so we're doing the same thing again i'm uh, in the conference room Uh, you're in a classroom and and we're having this conversation and one of these days i'll get a rig up that we can be in the same room uh, a booth talking to each other Uh, but for now maria what's uh everyone's leadership road is a little bit different Uh, tell us what you're doing now uh, and how you got here uh, you know what? I, it did not start out in pharmacy for me. Um, I was a medical illustrator, and I was working from home. Um, and it, um, it ch- something in my life changed when my son was born with spina bifida, and uh, he was life flighted over to University of Iowa ho- hospitals and clinics, and. Uh, um, all the doctors and nurses there were wonderful, and they, you know, they they saved my son's life. And I saw that uh, as I was at the the hospital there, um, you know, I had I saw how much of an impact all of those doctors and nurses and the rest of the healthcare team had on me and my family. And I felt that I needed to give back um, in in the same way. And so. I wanted to um, get into the healthcare field myself, and uh, so I was sort of in that healthcare field at the time as I was uh, illustrating medical um, diagrams and things like that for textbooks um, and uh, journals and things like that. Um, however, um, I wanted to do more. And so I was looking to uh, go back to school and I looked at different programs like pharmacy and PT and OT. And with my skill set and my background, I I decided that pharmacy was uh, something that would fit uh, fit my personality and my skills the best. And so um, I talked to another good friend of mine who had gone through the Creighton University uh, pathway, and uh, they couldn't say anything um, good enough about it. They they were just raving about this program, um, and so I thought, you know, that I started looking into it and and get more interested uh, in it. But I still didn't really feel like I really knew what a pharmacist did. So I went out and I got a job as a pharmacy technician. Um, at a Hy-Vee drugstore, and uh, just to get a really good feel of what they really do. Um, and the more I learned, the more interested I was in becoming a pharmacist. And so I, uh, I applied to, to pharmacy school and got in, and um, uh, now I'm in my fourth year, and I'm actually getting to do some of the things that I've been studying um, and uh, I, I just find it fascinating. The more I learn, the more interested I am in the field. Um, I also went from community pharmacy to hospital pharmacy during my uh, schooling because I got an opportunity to get a job at a hospital and I wanted to learn what they do in the hospital compared to a community pharmacy. Um, and so I went to work one day a week for a hospital pharmacy throughout my schooling. Um, And the more I worked for the hospital, I felt like that's where I belonged. Um, I I really enjoy the clinical aspects, but I also enjoy uh, being with people, working with the patients and their families. I like working with the doctors and the nurses. Um, 
as a, an interdisciplinary team. Um, and so I feel like that's, that's my path um, to take. Um, yeah. And I, I think, um, let me start with uh, uh, my children were born 27 weeks in one day. I remember my, my wife missed six months of work uh, because of it. And she was on 55 days hospital bed rest uh, that we spent 11 to 12 weeks in the NICU. Had a scare when one of our daughters came home. Uh, my wife and I were doing compressions and breaths, uh, giving CPR to our three-month-old. So um, I, I truly understand what it is to, to see uh, the team succeed and the t and to uh, have uh, your child uh, go on and, and things to work out uh, and how that can be tremendously motivating to come to work and come to school every day. Um, I wanted to talk about that distance program because it's one of the very few in the country. It's extremely hard to do right. And from what I've heard that Creighton has done it right. So I wanted to first talk about the distance program a little bit and what is it to be in an online program? The fourth year is identical to any fourth year in any other pharmacy school. But tell me about P1 year, P2 year, P3 year. Uh, tell me about that first P1 year and how it differed maybe a little bit. Because you went to four years of undergraduate at Iowa State. Uh, so you've been in the classroom. Uh, you didn't do a distance undergrad. Tell me a little bit about that transition from face-to-face -face classes at Iowa State to becoming a distance student in a graduate program. Yeah, and I, you know, I had a lot of questions about uh, the program as well, and uh, that's why I, I, you know, I talked to my friend who was uh, highly recommending it uh, before I did it, and then I, I had a lot of questions when I went to my interview too uh, on what it was going to be like, and starting out as a, a distance student. It is very similar to what you would do as as a classroom student. You are sitting there and you have um, you have the lecture the same way as as the classroom student. However, you are watching it on a screen instead of sitting there uh, physically in the classroom. But they don't only have recordings of the lecture, but some of the lectures are actually live. So you can sit there and you can ask questions throughout the lecture if you wanted to. Um, for me, uh, I had to kind of create my own schedule when I did that. Uh, I created it, I, I kind of thought of it as my uh, full-time job. I would set up uh, a time that I would sit down every morning. So I would start at eight and then I would um, sit there and listen to lectures plus study everything until about four in the afternoon. Then I would take a couple hours break and then I would start studying again for another couple hours. Um, and so it was like having a full-time job plus an evening and weekend job on, at the same time. Um, and so I think that you have to be very uh, self-motivated in order to do it. I think it is a, a very efficient way of doing schooling because you're not sitting in, um, you know, hour and a half a day traffic um, going to and from class because that at that time you could be sitting there studying instead of sitting in traffic. Um, even just between classes, you know, I don't have any lag time of going from one building to another or anything like that. Um, so I feel like it's a very efficient way to study. Um, I wouldn't say it's easier or harder than a classroom uh, way of studying, but I think it's different. And I think that each person um, knows what works for them. Sometimes people need to have that, um, that um, time that they need to be able to have somebody uh, keep them accountable to go to class. For me, I'm, I'm a very self-motivated student, and so I like the flexibility of being able to um, listen to the lecture when I'm in the frame of mind that I need to be. Um, you know, there were times where I would listen to lectures at the same time as they they were um, they were being recorded, but at the same time, there was other times where I needed to catch them up on several lectures in a row, for example. And so. An online program allows you to be a little bit more flexible, uh, but it, it's not a 
you know, listen to everything at the end of the semester and then uh, go take the exam. You do have to, <laughs> you do have to study, uh, you know, throughout the week because there's so many assignments in between to kind of keep you would, on top of that. Yeah. And, and thinking back to it and, and looking back on myself, I, I think it actually would have been a great choice for me as a 30 something, a terrible choice for me as an early 20 something. So I think that would have been uh, that self motivation that you have. I really needed that my roommates were all going to school at the same time. Uh, we all got together. And I remember that even just that 15 minute walk back and forth, if you do it over a whole year, uh, it works out to be about three 40 hour weeks. So when yeah, you're talking about a couple of hours, I did the math. If you have an hour commute each way for a year, it works out to be 12 and a half, 40 hour weeks that you've spent in that car, uh, yeah, which is I believe a it. terrible, terrible waste of time and coming from city traffic for sure. Well, what I, I've never been to your home, but you told me that your living room became a library slash study place slash uh, everything. I just thought this was kind of fascinating that once everybody leaves the house, then the house is yours and you can do what you want with it. Tell me about this uh, kind of uh, professional space that you created for yourself. Well, you know, I wanted to have a bright area. Um, some people like to study in a cave. I do not. And my living room has a big picture window, has a lot of windows. So I moved the desk in there. Uh, I put the bookshelves up there and there's bookshelves all around. Um, so I got all my pharmacy books all lined up. Um, I got my computers, I got my laptop and my desktop. And so that I can multitask and do everything at the same time, you know, I can have up to date up on one computer while I'm you know, studying the lecture on the other. Um, so I'm all about multitasking and I need to have a, a, a good environment. Um, so yeah, my living room is now a, a study library uh, instead, but uh, that's what works for me, so. <laughs> okay, well, well, tell me a little bit about, I guess, the, the advantages that it had. So now you've, you've reclaimed, you know, X number of 40 hours uh, weeks uh, how much are you, how much have your, you or your classmates that are also in the distance program been able to work? Cause I think many students who would uh, weigh the distance program against an in-person program would want to know, well, can I work extra hours? Uh, certainly I think full-time would be near impossible, but maybe 20 hours, 10 hours. What, what are your classmates saying? Uh, what was your experience, uh, during those three years you were, uh, doing distance? Yeah, you know, it really does depend on the person. And um, I remember as a as coming into the program, I hated when people would say that, because I we have I have a classmates that don't work at all. I have at least one classmate who has worked full time this whole time. Um, now that is not the norm. Uh, working full time would be extremely difficult. Um, I think the majority of people would work anywhere from ten to twenty hours a week. For me, I worked I worked one full day. So I worked about eight to 10 hours a day, a week. And uh, um, I was able to do that in, because when we do our labs as a distance program, we come in the summer and we spend two, hour, two weeks on campus where we just do labs after lab after lab, you know, just back to back. Um, but the campus students, they ha take their labs throughout the year. And so on one day, they all have labs. For example, you know, all day Tuesday, it's all labs for them. And so on that day, when I didn't have any classes, I would make that my work day. So I would go into work um, and get all my work hours done uh, in one day. And that would seem to work for me. And then I didn't have, you know, um, three evenings a week when I worked, you know, two, three, four hour shifts. So it sounds like batching from uh, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week where you're so efficient that everything you do, you're, you're spending time doing just that thing. Uh, another person that uh, had a great book about this was Cal Newport and his uh, deep work where, you know, spending four hours of undisturbed time is worth, you know, 12 hours when you're distracted or more. Uh, and so it sounds like you are not just, I hate to use the word efficient because it doesn't give it justice. You're being able to do deep work and also 
uh, do this part-time work at the same time, kind of uh, really taking advantage of the, the medium. But what are maybe some disadvantages? Uh, now, tell me a little bit about the other students that you connect with online, uh, but maybe some of the disadvantages of the uh, online. Yeah, so uh, if you want to be an online student, um, you have kind of the choice if you want to be very independent and kind of be on your own, or if you want to create a network for yourself and with the other students. Um, and so I do know that some students did feel like they were, they were kind of alone in the program in that, you know, they didn't have that day-to-day uh, -day interaction with people that they would see in class every day. Um, for me, I took that, um, I guess, a step further. And I think a lot of people did this in my class. We form groups, study groups. Um, so we would have certain people that we would keep in touch with uh, on a weekly basis, sometimes on a daily basis. Uh, for example, I had uh, uh, one friend that I uh, got to know pretty well over my summer um, for the summer program. And uh, then we would keep in touch and study together uh, for tests and such. Um, we would, for example, ask people, uh, as ask each other questions that we would come up with for, to study for the tests, um, or maybe try to clarify questions that we would have in class before I would ask the professor, uh, just because sometimes another person understands the material differently than what you do. And so um, there is that disadvantage of you might feel a little alone um, if you're not used to being on your own studying all the time. Uh, but that can be both an advantage and a disadvantage, I think. You don't have that distraction of other people then either. Um, so uh, for me, I thought it was almost like a flexible thing. I could get in touch with people when I wanted to, but uh, they weren't distracted me um, to go out and party, for example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, Tell me a little bit about uh, the rotations uh, that you've taken and how they fit into your goal, ultimate goal to become a hospital pharmacy resident. Uh, how did you kind of decide which nine or ten rotations, I'm not sure how many Creighton does, that uh, you wanted to do and, and how it kind of all fits together? Maybe start with the required ones and then go on to the electives. Yeah, we, uh, we have to do eight total and uh, we do five weeks for each rotation and the five required for us is hospital, community pharmacy, ambulatory, acute care, and MTM. And then on the uh, electives, I chose academics with you. Good one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Really good one. Uh, and then I chose hospital administration. And then I chose oncology. And I chose the oncology because when I did my IPI, um, I did two weeks at a hospital in Ames. And I was really, um, I just saw how much those pharmacists did for those oncology patients and how much of an impact they had on the oncology patients and the family. And so I just wanted to learn more about it. Uh, for the academic, I really wanted to see if I would like teaching. And I have to say, I really love it. Uh, I really like the interaction with the students, uh, especially the, t the pharmacy technicians, uh, because probably because it's a smaller class and so I get to know them better. And then my third one I chose was uh, hospital administration or management. Um, because I do like that leadership role, um, I've gotten to know um, several pharmacists uh, there are managers, and um, I, I could see myself doing something like that in the future, uh, possibly. So um, I wanted to learn more about that, too. Okay. Well, what are you most excited about today? I know you've got December coming up, uh, mid-year coming up. Uh, what's really exciting you now? Um, I am really excited about going to mid-year. I have a poster that I'm going to present at mid-year. Um, we did a... Uh, I wrote up a case report on uh, meningitis. We had an interesting case at, on my acute care rotation this summer. So I will pre be presenting that. Um, we will be meeting with uh, some of the other residency directors and the residents that are um, in this um, 
area and have residency programs in this uh, area in central Iowa. Um, I do really like central Iowa. And so um, I would love to get a residency in this area. And I actually didn't come from central Iowa. I, I'm originally from Norway and uh, I came here when I was a foreign exchange student and then, then I liked it so much I went to Iowa State here. Um, and so I've just kind of, um, I've fallen in love with the people of Iowa and the places here. So um, yeah, I would like to stay here. And so that excites me um, that I'm getting, I'm getting close to being able to practice what I've learned in school. Um, um, but at the same time, I'm really excited about uh, possibly doing a residency, um, getting to do some more of those rotations that um, I, you know, I don't feel like I have enough electives for this year. And so I would love to do a re uh, residency just in order to get some more of those rotations too. And that's, so that's one of the reasons I would like to do a residency. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well, um, if you, um, I guess so now we've got you know kind of everything from you know beginning to end is there anything else you wanted to share that we haven't covered um, anything that uh, you're you're kind of thinking about uh, towards the future um, you know like I said there I wanted to uh, just experience more of this of the specialty fields uh, in pharmacy um, and so that's one of the reasons I want to do a uh, residency, but I also, uh, I, I see myself, uh, I, I guess my, my dream job would be doing both academics and clinical uh, pharmacy types of things. Um, and so that's kind of why I'm looking at, at becoming a, doing a residency. And so that's what makes me excited about that. Uh, I completely understand. I completely understand. I love uh, being a preceptor. I love interacting with students. And, and as you know, sometimes the students uh, teach you more than you teach them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe you could give us a couple of uh, quick tips uh, in terms of uh, you seem to be so self-motivated. Um, what is your best daily ritual to keep your work on track? It seems that you know, you've made it three years through a distance program. Uh, now you're doing an APPE year just like anyone else. Uh, how did what's your best daily ritual uh you know i that schedule really does help for me uh, especially in the beginning when you are trying to get into that routine setting up a schedule you know i even had a schedule set up with i'm going to study this subject for so many minutes uh each day so i i pretty much had each minute planned out for the first semester and then you know, I just kind of adjusted from there on. So I think that um, that's something that really helps me is just having that schedule um, just to keep you on track a little bit. What's the best career advice you've ever received or given? You know, um, I think that I always try to approach things as what if I was in that patient's shoes or that coworker's shoes, you know, how would I want to be treated? Um, and for me, then I would always want that person to go that extra mile. And so that's what I always try to do. I try to go that extra mile. Um, even if it's just to try to get the insurance to cover uh, a medication, you know, I tried to make that extra phone call for, to the insurance company um, or just doing that extra little bit, um, I think it goes a long way. And what inspires you? I feel like there's so many things that uh, that do ex uh, inspire me, but I would say just seeing how far my son have gotten um, in life already. Uh, we didn't know if he was going to be able to walk, and I just saw him skipping down the street <laughs> the other day, and you know, running after him, trying to catch up with him. So. Um, he inspires me just to keep going and being better because I know that the challenges that he's facing every day. So, well, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you being on the Pharmacy Podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to the Pharmacy Future Leaders Podcast with your host, Tony Guerra. Be sure to share the show with the hashtag Pharmacy Future Leaders.